Here we go. Today we have the Cavalier Geneve Black 2 Square Press Toro. Square Press. Mm -hmm. With it, we have the Larceny Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Small Batch. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to Cigars, Liquor, and More as we join our buddies Bill. Howdy. And our other brother Daryl. Smoke up, Johnny. Having fun in 2021. Broadcasting from our studio speakeasy as they talk about cigars, liquor, and anything else that comes to mind. You jumped the gun. You jumped the gun too quick. This has an interesting cold draw. Too late now. It kind of has a, um, it kind of has a, a licorice and cinnamon kind of thing going on. Nice. Interesting. Okay. So, tell me more about the Cavalier. Well, I will. Yeah, do it. It has a Mexican San Andreas Maduro wrapper. <laughs> nice. One of your favorites. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and then has Nicaraguan filler and binder. MSRP, $9. Excellent. What's unique about it is it's banned. It's banned. It has a small band. But then instead of having a regular band, it has a little square of 24 karat gold. And it is actually 24 karat gold. It's very, very thin leaf, you know, like your art art leaf. It's it's uh it's right. edible gold. Yeah. But it still doesn't burn. But you know, you can poop out gold. Well, no, most uh, most people so I've <coughs> I've had I've had a Cavalier before, not this one, it was the white one. I can't remember the name. It's in the book, I should look it up, but I'm not going to right now. <laughs> um I, I had one and it was burning down. Now this one's close to the, really close to the head. The other one was about halfway between the head and the foot, and uh, it was burning. His burn is getting down there, and then as it reached the gold, the burn was going around the gold. It it made the shape of the gold all the way all the way around. Everybody else, at, we were at uh, we were at Main, Main Street. Street at the time, and everybody there who had had one of those are like, wow. That, didn't happen to me. It burned right through for me. Mm -hmm. Everybody said that. Not me. Yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> so we'll find out. We'll find yeah. out what happens with this. <clears throat> um, the Larceny. The Larceny is from Heaven Hill. Uh, has a, I believe it is the third mash bill. It's 68% corn, 20% wheat, 12% barley. It has won the 20, a, a 2020 gold award in the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Uh, according to the site, the aroma is of fresh bread and toffee with a note of butterscotch. The taste is buttery caramel and honeyed notes with a rich mouthfeel. It finishes long, sweet, and savory and rings in at $23. Wow, no. Yeah, man. the first number's a two. Haven't we had the larceny before? And there's not before? three numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've not had the larceny before. Okay. Literally, first time, well... We've mentioned you it may before, have, Yeah, right? we've mentioned it before. Yeah. You may have had it, and I was not around. I'm not going to say that, but we've never had it. Okay. Not on the show, right. not together. It's the first bottle I've ever bought. I don't know if you've ever bought a bottle. Small batch, 94, 92 proof. Nice. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Also bottled at 92 proof. Now I'm lighting this guy up. I want to see if some of those interesting sweet notes come through. You know, it, it it does it does come across a little doughy, not not anywhere as doughy as Giant ninety five, mm -hmm. but it does come off a little bit of <laughs> little doughy. bready. And I what I smell, I don't know. I'm I'm leaning more towards butterscotch than whatever it was you said. <laughs> Bread, toffee, and butterscotch. Oh, you did say butterscotch. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get the toffee. Maybe maybe it's the toffee. I don't think it's bready. I, I, Not on the no. smell. There's a oh. there's, there's a slight bread on the taste. Okay. Now the taste they claim is uh, buttery caramel and honeyed notes. It's pretty nice. I like it. I'm not sure what rich mouthfeel is. Usually when they say rich mouthfeel, they're talking that buttery and creamy. <laughs> Yep, uh, the creamy, oily stuff. kind of feeling. Yep, but yep, yep. this is uh, this is uh, I mean, this is a Kentucky bourbon. You don't get those 
those heavier, oilier compounds because they're all column stills. I don't know. Ha. Huh. I wouldn't call it a rich mouthfeel. But definitely get I definitely say it's buttery. Hmm. It is kind of I don't know, maybe it's in between. I gotta have to get I'll give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll gift you this one. You say it, but you know, we're we're skeptical for the oh, Daryl is. Okay. No worries, man. No worries. <laughs> I like your rocking the South Padre shirt there. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I love my uh, my long sleeve rash guards. They're good for all occasions, in my opinion. I just like that it says South Padre. Mm. <laughs> Whether you want to be warmer or cooler, it works. Bada boom, bada boom, baby. So there was something that you told me you had like a like a, it's not exactly current news, but it's older news about the uh, origin of the word cocktail. Oh, I'd like okay. To, I'd like to hear it because I have not heard it. Mm. Well, they are uh, uh, wives' tales of, of how the name cocktail came about. Um, so somebody gifted me a long time ago. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, the Playboy Bartender's Guide. From what year? Uh, yeah. 1979. No, this is the 2003 edition. There okay. I think that's the, so I, I briefly Googled it. I think that's the last time they made it. Well, it people get so much information online now. Uh, why? Yeah, well, and Playboy was kind of dying by the turn of the century, right? Yeah, everything was going online. Yep. Well, I guess I better look it up. Uh, boom, 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 boom. There it is. You know, this oh, is... Oh, uh, way far behind. Well... I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna hold off on the cigar a little bit. All right. So again, this is a uh, Playboy Bartender's Guide 2003 edition, written by Thomas Mario, and illustrated by Leroy Neiman, who, which you know, our, our listeners can't see the illustrations. And <laughs> we might have to put a well. Listen carefully to the illustration. <laughs> uh, and this is on page 63. It's called Introduction to Cocktails, uh, and it says. Um, the most overwhelmingly popular of all, all potables, the open sesame to brunch parties, lunch parties, dinner parties, midnight supper parties, and the next morning's rival uh, revival parties, the cocktail is undoubtedly America's most noted contribution to the world of bibulous, bibulous, but I don't know what that word is, pleasure. Uh, the stories concerning the origin of the word cocktail are nearly as many as the varied uh, the varieties of the mixtures themselves. Among them, the following legends have a life of long vintage. All right. So the first one. Uh, the word came from the French cocktail. Co- co- coquetel? Well, I'm not, <laughs> I can't pronounce French. Uh, once used to describe a mixed drink in the Bordeaux region... One of the earliest written references can be tracked to, oh, this is another, uh, one of the earliest written references can be tracked back to an American magazine in 1806 in which it was stated that the, quote, cocktail is a stimulating liquor composed of spirits of any kind, sugar, water, and bitters. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's a very specific description. So the, the first one is supposed to be separated from the second one, but it's not in here. Uh, so, I mean, but it's descriptive and describes an old fashioned. It kind of does. <laughs> right. Uh, you you got your liquor of any kind, uh, sugar, water, bitters. You yeah. Got the, the, that water happens to have some lemon juice in it, but yeah, still, so, I mean, it's derived from French word is the first and maybe most popular description. I don't think they put them in any particular order. They just found some wives tales and put them in here. Okay. So the first one is it comes from a French word. Uh, I get. The second one is it. It, it was referenced in a magazine. Uh, the next one is army officers in the South were once served a luscious mixed drink by a lovely Southern belle. Her name, Octel. Octel. <laughs> no. Not buying that one. Nope. Nope. 
Are there more? How many more? Yeah, there, there, there are a few I'm sure more. there's dozens, right? There, there are a few more. Yeah, I, I won't be that. Nope. First one, I think they put them in order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one. A distinguished American general was invited to the court of a Mexican monarch whose daughter appeared with a drink in the royal cup of gold encrusted with rubies. When the obvious question of who was going to drink first racked all the king's men... The daughter solved the problem very intelligently by drinking the libation herself. The stunning princess name, of course, was Cocktail. Princess C-O- Cocktail? C-O-C-T-E-L. Cocktail. Hmm. <laughs> Could be. Yeah, but I don't think so. No, nah, I like the first one still. <laughs> Western horse traders, whose nags weren't worth the price of their pelts on sale day, fed the horses liquor which made them cock their tails. Hang on, i got to change pages here. Which made them cock their tails and come to life with incredible spirit. Mm, no. 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 They, they tried too many puns. <laughs> too many puns. Okay. Nope. Uh, New Orleans apocryly. Uh, ep, ep, ep. Is it apothecary? There we go. Apothecary. Ah, I'm a yeah. good guesser. Nice. Okay. New Orleans apothecary. <laughs> apothecary. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Antonini Murderi Picardi. French. <laughs> I'm starting to like this one. Born in France. Uh, would serve as a guest at concoctions of brandy, water, sugar, and famous bitter and, and his famous bitters in an egg cup called a carcatour. Uh, in French, uh, the word was subsequently shortened to cockety, and eventually cocktail. Okay, this is my this is my number two. <laughs> I like this one, but that's only because the other one's probably older and the real origin. And then this guy was using cocktail. And I, I like no, I'm still on board with the first one, but this is my <laughs> second favorite. Oh, let's get one more. Okay, and we got let's talk about the cigar and some liquor. A young Irish lass. This tale by James Fairmore Cooper not only managed to procure and roast chickens from Tory farmers for revolutionary guests, but also decorated their drinks with feathers from cock's tails. Ah, so this is possible. (laughs) We've used feathers to decorate things for a long time, and why not a drink? Well, I mean, I know why not a drink, because they're probably infested with mites and all kinds of disease. But that that aside... (laughs) Before the, you know, era of, you know, hey, there's probably disease in that. Don't stick it in my beverage. (laughs) Ah, I like that one. I kind of like that one. Okay, there's one more. Mm. Hmm. Morning tipplers in New Amsterdam, visiting inns for a pick-me-up, would invariably run into Dutch barmaids who, you guessed it, used the tails of roosters for sweeping away the previous night's litter. How's that related to the drink? Uh, no. No, I'm sorry. That's, no. <laughs> no, we have two possibilities. One of which is <clears throat> strong. And one of which is less strong, but stronger than the other. Less flag. less strong, but somewhat related because it's still French. Well, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boil it down to brass tacks. That's what it comes down mm-hmm. to, right? Yeah. Well, so many of our words are derived from other words. A derivation makes the most sense. It does. It really does. Um, these ridiculous stories of of making horses more chipper to sell them. <laughs> that's just stupid. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not buying that for a second. I've not, I've not seen an am, animal have a lot of liquor and become more prancy around. No. <laughs> no. No, and anything if they're else, already they nags, more yeah, if they're already <laughs> nags, they're going to go, you know what, I'm going to take a nap right here. Yep. Sure That's exactly what's going to happen to them. <sighs> All right. We're, we're, we're good into the cigar, eh? But, you know, uh, Playboy's always good for a read. Sure. <laughs> sure. They, they can be funny sometimes. Well, we, mm. we were going to have... Um, uh, old fashions. We're gonna have old fashions later. That's so, a good point. You know, the, cocktails. This, old this fashions. larceny will be poured into an old fashioned mm, in a second half, as guaranteed. 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 Mm-hmm. 
All right. So tell us tell us what you think about this thing. All right. So I like this one. It, it's it's a medium to mild, but it has bold tendencies. So it's a medium to mild on the smoke, but then in the back of the throat, it has some staying power. Yeah, it does. Um, it's not peppery, but it's no, it's no. powerful. There's some little hook there. Um, but it's definitely, I don't know. It 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 feels a little bit like a like like a spice. Like you 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 yes. inhaled a little powder spice and it just stuck right there. That's a little bit of what it's like. It's not exactly like that, but it's a little bit. Right, and I think the the tasty note is I'm gonna go with the general term baking spices. It's uh, I would not. It's not earthy. It's not woody. Maybe a little, man. Maybe a little woody. Little woody. But it's mostly bacon spicy. Um, it's it's either woody or a wood nut type flavor. Yeah. Yeah. No, a nut does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But right, right it's very pleasant, and it's got a good. It uh, it's got a good smoke. It's got a, a good ash. It's got a nice burn. Good draw. It's a square press, so you know you got to do it right. And if you get that <laughs> pressure wrong, you, uh, you 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 get problems. So yep. it's doing great. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the flavor. It's nice. It's you know it's, it's sounds gonna, funny. It's not what I remember at Main Street. It's going to be uh, well. This is a different profile than the one that, that we had. At yeah, Main you Street. said we had the white one. I don't yeah. remember. Um, I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. I don't remember. <laughs> no, seriously, like I didn't journal that one. We we just sat down and smoked, right? Uh, so I journaled. I, didn't, I journaled. That yeah, one. I didn't. I didn't bring my my journal that day. It was one of the <clears> one of <throat> few I journaled. Mm. Uh, I mean, there were there were a lot of people there. Yeah. Uh, so usually when that happens, I don't really, I don't really journal it. But I did this time. Uh, of course. Because now you can't find it. No, I can't find. It. And you've indexed it and everything. Oh, there it is, twenty nine. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I love the index in this thing. Uh, so white band. Oh, you're right. Uh, it is the uh, Cavalier Genevieve Gold. Ah. Okay. And this is the black two. Yep. Or I I. I don't oh. know. Mine goes two. Roman number two, baby. Yeah, and that one that one was about a medium as well. So but it didn't have the it didn't have that I wanna be bold. As far as the it interaction between the liquor and the cigar, I'd say there's not a lot. The cigar just seems to be on its own and the liquor just seems to be on its own. I don't think they compliment or detract at all from either of those cases i think there's just bold there are you getting kind of a uh, almost a sour flavor from the cigar no no i'm kind of getting that uh i don't i've puffed enough without the liquor that i don't think that i don't think it's the combination of the liquor that's doing it but i kind of get i kind of get that feeling no i'm not maybe that. okay maybe a sour nut <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I, I like uh, I like where it's going. I'm not getting anything um, fruity off of it that might be sour or nothing acidic. I'm not saying I don't. I'm not saying I don't like it. Not at all. But I'm, I am kind of I am kind of getting that little feeling. Hmm. No, a little, no, I'm not little getting taste that. in I guess. I don't know. You know, I almost want to say is yeah. There's still a little, and I think one of the other baking spices in there for me, because you know I get this a lot, and I don't know why. <laughs> I'm getting that amaretto kind of flavor. You really like amaretto. Mm. You mean as a drink or in the cigar? No, in your cigar. Yeah, I like it in the cigar. I'm not a huge amaretto fan in a drink. But you notice it quite a bit in cigars. I do notice it. But Did, yeah, really? I think I've only seen you drink amaretto two, three times since I've known you. For, yeah. And I've known you for 20 years. It goes in something. <laughs> what does it go in? We... Coffee Amaretto goes in, goes in coffee. coffee. Goes in coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, now I can't think of any good amaretto drinks. Well, if any of you can think of nice amaretto drinks, send it my way, and uh, maybe I'll try it. Drink or shot? Well, a shot of amaretto would just be a shot of amaretto, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> a mixed shot? Oh, I don't care. Drink. I drink just about anything. Uh, no, you don't count. You don't look something up and send it to me. <laughs> What uh, uh, we <laughs> grab your phone? 
I'll, I'll send you some right now. Just look up the first random thing. Right no, no, no. Right I'm looking up a specific uh, mixed shot because I didn't have. We were somewhere, and I didn't. Ha- they didn't have the ingredients to make a buttery nipple. So I took the ingredients they had. I, I did a search for it, and I found uh, a rather interestingly named drink. Uh, and I'm trying to can't remember it, huh? Trying to find out, <laughs> trying to find out what's in it. But you got to be really careful when you search for this. Mm. Uh, kind of like you no, have to be really careful when you when you no, say, "Oh, is, I need this one's coffee liqueur, Irish cream, and uh, melon liqueur." Or the the Maduro, Maduro, Midori, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not it. But anyway, that drink is called the Quick Fuck. Oh, <laughs> well, it doesn't have enough alcohol in it to really screw you over, so I don't believe that. No, but uh, you know, when, I when, there was when you one... when you when you do a Google search on the quick fuck, you know you got yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> you got to weed through some stuff. I uh, I do remember a snake bite was a three layered drink, um, and it it was very colorful, it was very pretty, and it was um, clear layer was so I started out with the clear layer after saying it was colorful, so. <laughs> You're building up. <clears throat> yeah. You're building up. It was uh, peppermint schnapps. <laughs> and then uh, then on top of that, you put Kahlua. And then on top of that, you put like milk. So it's like clear, black, white. And it was uh, or actually cream. But I think we substituted milk because we didn't have cream. But uh, it went down pretty good. I liked it. Nice. Yeah. Because when I look up snake bite now, I'm like, I'm pretty sure the bartender just called it that and didn't know what it was because I've never found a snake bite that had those ingredients again. Or a bartender there just made it up and Probably. that's what they were selling because they were low. They, you know, they weren't moving these things, so let's do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the peppermint schnapps was 100 proof. You know, Kahlua, obviously not so much. Milk, even less so. <laughs> so, yeah, not... Terribly evil. What proof is your milk? Oh, about half percent. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it went down pretty well. And after you do several of them, you you feel them. <laughs> Catch up to you, does it? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, you know what? People uh, have a lot of vitriol for larceny. There's uh, all these people who love it and, and, and just made people hate it. And... And I don't get it. It kind of seems it's that fine. Way. Yeah. It's fine. Not it's $23. Well. Now, that part I really like. Oh, yeah. And it's it's a really good liquor at that price point, I think. It is. And if you if you want something from Heaven Hill, this is a cheap way to get some Heaven Hill in your mm-hmm. belly. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, you've got, I mean, dozens, literally, literally hundreds of your basic Kentucky bourbon or whiskey that falls in the 20 to 30 dollar category and a lot of them are all very much along the same line and this is right there i don't yeah. see why people would hate but, it what i think is funny when you when you come across people that they're like you know they're oh no if, it, if it's not kentucky whiskey i don't want it and then you name a kentucky whiskey that's you know 15 bucks they're like oh that's crap well i thought you liked kentucky whiskey <laughs> come well, on man come on well, they got the economy of scale, so they should be less expensive. Yes, they should. I guess should. the thing I don't understand is why vodka is twenty dollars. I think the answer is profit margin shipping, because <laughs> the bottle and the shipping still cost just as much if it's aged or not. That's true. That is very but true. But how can you take something that's twenty dollars, age it for two to four years in expensive barrels? One-time use in Rick houses that, that weren't for free, right? And sell it for three dollars more. You're talking about a fifteen percent increase in total cost. When I could have sworn barrels and aging was significant portion of it, which which also well, kind of does you, tell me it's is shipping and bottling. But you but you do have to have you you do have to have volume to to get a, a reasonably a reasonably good liquor down to uh, a 
a, a doable price right, point right. for the mass majority of the population. Right. right. I mean, when you look at all the small crafts, and they're all 35 to 50, because at smaller volumes, yeah, they that's their break point. Yep. So Larceny is going to be that that Heaven Hill product, right in the twenty to thirty dollar category. That yeah, I don't comes out I, pretty. I have, there, there's nothing wrong with it at 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 that price point. We have had much worse. Oh yeah. So, kudos. I mean, yeah, kudos. I've I've had vodkas that are twenty three dollars, and you go, that's or, a good, that's a pretty good vodka. Where, where is and it? And they didn't age it. <laughs> they didn't age anything. It's just vodka. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say just vodka. You know how much I've loved vodka in the past. And I still got to... How much of you used to love vodka? <laughs> I do love it less than I used to. Good mm-hmm. point. Good point. All right. Well, you want to come back on the second half of this, uh, with the second half of the cigar and uh, and an old-fashioned? Yeah! Let's see how this guy makes an old-fashioned. Bottom bone. Do it. All right. Enjoy the any time of the day cigar. Drunk chicken cigars are nub delicious. So good you'll smoke it to a nub. You can get 10% off your order at drunkchickencigars.com by using the promo code CLM2020. All right, all right, we're back. We're back with our old fashions and the second half of the cigar. Hmm. Oh, so we didn't record it, but uh, the name pulled out of the hat is Christopher Falcone. Congratulations, Christopher. Send us a message so that you, too, can receive two drunk chicken cigars and some CLM swag. Yes, yes. In fact, very soon we will have new stickers. New Yay! and improved, colorized, reduced in volume. <laughs> or at least area. Sure. Re- reduced in size. Well, it, does. it, it, it is a component of volume because it does have thickness. Now. Yeah, okay. But I shouldn't have said volume, though, because that makes less sense. There. We we've gone down to a three inch round sticker from a four by four sticker. Yes, and I think it will probably be better and colored yeah. it, and yay, yay. We'll, we'll have those soon. All right, can't wait for that. Huh? I like your mock up. Yeah, I, like I made it. a few mock ups. I I printed a few and gave them to you and said, "Hey, want to print these?" <laughs> and I said, "Yes." Yep. Yep. <laughs> Let's print those. Let us do that. Mm. Man. Okay, this larceny makes a good old fashioned. Mm. Now, in some of the old fashions, we've we've said this. Hi- oh, this really highlights the sweet. This is really sweet. This is really smooth. This one, I think, uh, is is mild, and it lets the uh, the lemon take over. It does. You yeah, would have to uh, you would have to add more sugar to it if yeah, you wanted I, it to I be can, sweeter. I can feel the lemon in my in the mm-hmm. little, yeah when you you feel those little, little those pucker glands. back there yeah yeah, yeah, when, yeah. You, when your your saliva glands go yeah Ooh, Ooh, buddy let's kick this in the overdrive mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so you well, might want to sweeten doesn't this one up a bit at all it's very nice now, it doesn't it like I said though. it doesn't really add anything but it's an old fashioned I mean it just you it, it kind of takes care of itself you don't need to really do a whole lot to it so boom. Ah, this is this really good in an old fashioned. The question is, how yeah, does it change the cigar? Boom! Oh, at twenty three dollars, come on, <laughs> easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hell yeah! Hmm. Well, hmm. The cigar is pretty resilient. You know what though? It did change it. So this this cigar got woody. I liked it better without the old fashioned. I liked it better with just a larceny. Now it's a like a boring woody cigar. It's just woody. Whereas before it had those seasonings and spices and you know, I got the baking spices. And this one, it just became woody. For me. So when I when I when I drink first, then mm-hmm. then pull on the cigar. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh yeah. Uh, the the spicy part of it does go away. I don't necessarily think it's all woody. I still think there's a little bit of nut in there, but yeah, the the spice kind of goes away. But when I do it the opposite, when I draw, then then drink, uh, <laughs> I I get I, I get a little uh, <laughs> I don't know. lightheaded. No. no, no, no. <laughs> 
No, it <clears throat> the, it changes the taste of the lemon in the drink. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird. See, but you're not sure how. <laughs> okay, that's why. That's why you're at a loss for words. Hmm. You sure it's not lightheadedness? Could be. <laughs> hmm. So I didn't mention the retro hail. So it's got a nice retro hail. There's just a touch mm. of the pepper in it. I mean, I could be silly with the Nicaraguan tobacco. It's going to always be something there, right? But it's not, uh, it's not anything to make a choke. It's, uh, it's nice. It's very nice. Uh, it's just enough to let you know it's there. Yeah. Yeah, all in all, I'm I'm in agreement with you on this one. I, I liked it better with the Larceny straight. Mm. Uh, the Larceny makes a really uh, it makes a good old fashioned because it doesn't uh, help or harm the old fashioned. But I think because it doesn't cut down on that lemon, uh, that that's kind of what does it. You may have to make it a little sweeter mm-hmm. if you want it to balance out a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you know I make them the same way every time. I don't try to tailor them. Yeah. Ahead of time, I just go with the basic recipe to start with. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, but if you're not a fan of lemon, firstly, you probably shouldn't drink old fashions. (laughs) But no kidding, I don't like lemon, but I want an old fashioned. (laughs) What? No sense. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) No, that was kind of it. (laughs) Uh, This one, this one is pretty lemon forward. Lemon, lemon forward. You like that? Wow. No, I, I don't. I didn't make that up. People say that. No, I do not like that. <laughs> lemon like that? forward. Huh? Hmm. LF, Why, LF for short. Why, Lemon, I believe you're being a bit too forward. <laughs> yes. Yes. That that that's makes my, more that's sense. That's my country gentleman. But you got to put all of that in there. <laughs> Otherwise, it makes no sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have a country gentleman hat. I know. I like I like speaking like Foghorn Leghorn when I'm wearing it. And you should. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody around me is like, say, oh, say. no, he's wearing that. <laughs> 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 is he going to do that all night? And my answer is, maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, is maybe. what the answer is. Until I'm too drunk to be able to do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull that pretentious southern. <laughs> I don't know if it's pretension or just boldness, right? No, I think it's, it's pretentious. Just, it's pretentious. Is it, is it pretentious? Yeah. Okay. Pretentious Southern Georgia. I didn't grow up in uh, <laughs> the South or Georgia, so I just thought of it as uh, being, uh, I don't know, confident. Okay. No? Well, partially. You think it's pretension? I think it's pretentious. Okay. Well, I got to rule it out. I don't know. <laughs> You grew up in the South. I didn't. I think it's pretentious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that, that's the that's the Southern lawyer speak that that came from uh, uh, what movie? There's movies that do that, right? They're, they always, any lawyer in the South speaks like Foghorn oh, Leghorn, uh, right? A lot, a lot, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I think that's why it what feels was pretentious. the one with McConaughey and uh, uh, the guy that played. Glass. Um, who's the guy that played Glass? I cannot think of that movie. Uh, um, he played Unbreakable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, yeah, he also played. He he also played the the Patch guy in the Marvel movies. Yeah. What the hell is his name? Why yeah. am I drawing a blank on his name? What's in your wallet? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, and his his role, uh, I I loved him the best. Well, two movies I loved him the best in was Pulp Fiction and uh uh, uh, uh no, that's the, a different guy. The gentleman thing. I'm a different guy. What? No. Yeah. No. What? Oh, it's the same dude. No. Yes. You're thinking of Morgan Freeman. No, I'm not thinking of Morgan Freeman. Okay. Morgan Freeman was not in Marvel movies. And he was not in oh, Pulp Fiction. Oh, you're right. That wasn't Morgan Freeman in Unbreakable. No. I thought it was. No. My bad. No, you're right. D- 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 the other guy. Which no, no. The- you know how much I love to watch you struggle. I'm going to let you sit on this and now say the other guy's name. Uh, <laughs> I get these motherfucking snakes. Oh, this motherfucking <laughs> I know. I know. He's great. I love them all. 
I like you know what I like is. Freeman yeah. better. I love Morgan Freeman's voice, and I love how just uh, laid back, but it, his laid backness can be both mean. Oh yeah, and, and it, it can be it can be aggressive, sarcastic, and it can be it can be anything. It can be anything. Yeah, it can be anything he wants it to be. It's great, and if you're gonna have a voice for God, there should only be two. George Burns Samuel. or Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. Thank you. <laughs> nice hint. Nice hint. Thank you. I think yeah. Samuel L. Jackson makes a great God. <laughs> because I don't think God would watch his tongue. God could do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> watch this, motherfucker. <laughs> <clears throat> I, Samuel so, L. Jackson, yeah. Okay, I don't know why, but I was thinking it was Freeman to play Glass. It was Jackson, though. You're right, it was Jackson. No. Jackson, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah Samuel, Samuel Jackson, Jackson played Glass. Yeah. Um, My bad. The, but I was still going to let you sit. The <laughs> it's so much fun. The British movie, you. the, the <laughs> British uh, the, the British gentleman spy movie, whatever that thing was called. 007? He was, no, 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 no. Because that's a big one. Samuel L. Jackson was in this. It was, he, he had a lisp in the movie and they ate McDonald's. Oh, I don't You've think seen I know this that movie. One. Um, I, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think we should do like movie recaps anymore because <laughs> we don't know them and we don't remember the names and we don't follow the stars so closely that we know all of them. And, we're just not very great on pop culture. We should stick with electronics. <laughs> it's our specialty. People wonder why it is we talk electronics so much. Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. Yeah. We're this not. is a good example of why. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm hmm. All right. I'm going back to the. I'm going back to what the, is the straight what, drinky what drink. What is that? That that spiraling. Mm. I loved him in that one. No, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah you know, I got to look it up now. Me and uh, the man with one red shoe. Samuel was Samuel Jackson in that no, one. No, that was Tom Hanks. Yeah, <laughs> well, I know that. I know Tom Hanks played the star. I did not remember Samuel Jackson in that. <laughs> There's a good reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, yeah. We this is not therapeutic. <laughs> mm. Oh, Jurassic Park! I love, I loved his character, in Jurassic Park too. I'm gonna take this moment <laughs> to apologize to the listeners. This is uh, not the best. This is not our best work. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> really we shouldn't movie tangent. Honestly, this, this let's make a pact now that we don't movie tangent anymore. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's not on this how could it not be on wikipedia oh you know what i gotta rinse my mouth out more i don't like what the uh old-fashioned does to the larceny after you have it straight. oh he was in a james bond movie a time to kill oh okay <laughs> snakes on a plane <laughs> no no you gotta really thoroughly rinse your mouth to go back from an old-fashioned to straight larceny do you mm-hmm mm. Yeah, it's not pleasant. Oh, did you know he did a voice in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas? Yes. <laughs> I did know that. I like the Grand Theft Auto series. Although uh, the Miami Vice one, whatever it was called, Miami something. Boy, we shouldn't reference games either, it turns out. I don't remember which one that was called either. <laughs> all your base are belong to us. That was the best. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I love all your base. <laughs> Make oh, your back. time. <laughs> mm. I wonder if we could buy the rights to use that as our theme song. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. That thing went that that blew up. Also, <laughs> no one would get it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so niche. <laughs> That's like a sub niche culture. Well, it's, well, that game's a. Uh... Uh, that, that's what, 30, 30 years old now? Yeah. <laughs> Made in 84 or something? 84, 85, 86? Okay, 40 like years, 40, 50 years oh, old. Okay, 40, <laughs> 40 years old. It was uh, something wing. Go, go, go yes, wing. yes. Go star wing? wing? No. Uh, yeah, star wing. No. And uh, and the uh, it was a Japanese 
game that is translated, and the uh, the translation was <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> people made fun of it. It's like it's like, and somebody made King a techno Grisham. remix of it. <laughs> and then the techno remix was. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> so, so awesome. <laughs> so good. Fabulous. You can find it online. It's on YouTube. Look up all your base are belong to us. <laughs> you will find it. And there's nothing else that will turn up if you type those words. <laughs> <laughs> those words have never been together outside of that game and that techno song. <laughs> ah. It's fucking awesome. Mm. Okay. Finally, I got the rinse down, and Larson is back on track with the cigar, and I got I got my flavor back in the cigar. I'm I'm, I'm happier again. All happier. right, I'm 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 so thrilled for you. I got a thrill running down my leg. I like. Uh, that's not thrill. <laughs> that is that a precipitation of thrill? <laughs> yeah. If thrill was turned into a solid, this is what it would be. Um, <laughs> I, I did like the old fashioned. I just didn't like it tagging along with the larceny, and I didn't like it changing what was a great cigar and made into a mediocre cigar. So I'd recommend against that. Don't do that. Yeah, I don't know. You like both? Yeah. Um, I wasn't married to the spices, so I'm okay with it. Ah, uh, see, I liked it. That was what made it novel. That was what made it interesting. I thought it was the nutty flavor that made it novel. Nah. <laughs> mm. All right. So we are getting really close to hitting that gold spot. Yeah, we are. I'm really curious. Is it going to burn through or is it going to go gonna around? It's going to burn around, yeah. Burn through, burn around. We'll find out. Burn out. Mm -mm. Burn out. Better not. That would be a fail. Jesus built my hot rod. It was a love affair. I said Jesus. <laughs> Burnout just kind of brought that to mind because they say that in the song. <laughs> we're going to start. We're going to start talking in song lyrics. Uh, yeah, with, we shouldn't with no, do that either. With no beat to it. <laughs> we shouldn't do that either. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh, when but Christopher did, Walken could do it. it when he was on SNL and he did uh, he did the, the, the poker face. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> Walken's magic. Walken's, he can do anything. He could do absolutely anything. He can. He can. Again, though, we should not veer into and the I love having, and... <laughs> and, I, and I love... Uh, him in the video of of Weapon of Choice. Yeah. It's just awesome. Back when men could dance, huh? Mm -hmm. And he could. That was his, that, that was his uh, primary profession. Yeah, that was or, his or come his, up and... Yeah. That's where that's how he came up is through <laughs> damp and tap specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, this was very pleasant. I... I'm very glad I got the spices back in the cigar and the woodiness went away because that's what makes this cigar special. I'm telling you. That's that's it. That's it right there. I'm can't just, can't oh, tell look. me anything else. That's it right All there. All right. Calm down. <laughs> mm. You're sounding very, very, you know, sure about it. You're sounding very George Bush. <laughs> Not, not Dick Cheney, but more, more George Bush. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. We're, we're in a quagmire. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't very quagmire. Hmm. So, I was looking at the <laughs> recall of Gavin Newsom. Yeah, get, it, get us on to some other kind of subject. Yeah, we got to talk about something else. <laughs> this, the movie thing is not for us. <laughs> So, there's a recall for Gavin Newsom out there. But if you need people to come to your house at Mystery Science Theater, <laughs> Mystery Science Theater 3000, anything, we're there for you. Yeah, I often have to be told <laughs> to stop talking through movies. Yeah, the recall of Gavin Newsom. I, uh, well, go ahead and read, and then I'll, I'll so, tell you what. So, uh, from the recall Gavin Newsom website, as of 317... 
The official recall campaign has yeah. gathered 2.1 million <laughs> signatures, uh, which was apparently a historic grassroots effort um, to unseat this divisive politician. But a new survey has found that 52% of likely voters, that, that's an interesting, I feel like, <laughs> see, I know, what, I know what, what data filtering looks like in a report because when, when there's things you want to look the way you want it to look, you start filtering and then use words to explain your filtering, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And that's what they just did here. I don't know if you realize it. So you have to think critically about every word that's written because they're all written for a very specific reason. And they wrote likely voters because they did some filtering. <laughs> I guarantee it. 52% of likely voters would vote no if a recall election of the California governor was held today. Now, I don't know what that filter in, in, involves of what a likely voter is, but... So this is from Just the Facts. California's likely voters. Oh, you looked up likely voters. That's funny. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, eight in ten are registered to vote. Oh, okay. As of July 2020, you know, because we can't have anything new. As of July 2020, 20.9 million of California's 25.1 eligible adults were registered to vote. Okay, and 80% of them are likely to vote. So that means that 10% of them signed this petition. Well, <laughs> we assume that they're eligible voters, but 2.1 of 2 million, right. 20 million, 10%. Right. So, side note. He won the governorship in 2018 with 63% of the votes. So a significant win, right? Very, yeah. So the fact that they're finding that 52% are thinking about it, I mean, it, that's a significant change in two years. It's a, it's a huge shift. Now, my question was, is it his terrible policies? And my thought is probably not. <laughs> so apparently, Alexei Kosev... Uh, he's the reporter from the San Francisco Chronicle, the one who broke the story about Newsom eating out during the lockdown mm -hmm. um, in a, a rather famous fancy restaurant, uh, Laundry. Um, so they ask him, what, what do you think? And he said, yeah, I thought it was going to be a minor misstep when I first reported on it. It was sort of eye-catching, but I didn't expect it would spiral into this really existential threat to his political career. <clears throat> now, when asked, why do you think that is? He thought the reason was because it, it crystallized for people, a lot of people who were frustrated with him, um, exactly what it was about his pandemic response that they were so irritated and angered by. So they did a rather, rather harsh lockdown. Um, uh, uh, several states did. I know a lot of people in Illinois complaining about it, about it being rather excessive. Um, everybody thinks Texas was too lackadaisical, and I'm like, whatever. Just like, well, so we, we've we've kind of delved into these numbers a little bit, and uh, the rate of positive tests for COVID, uh, the rate of hospital, you mean the Wuhan virus, the Wuhan virus. The weight rate of uh, the the rate of deaths specifically, yeah, uh, tied into population. I mean, no matter population density, yep. No matter what state you're in, it's pr deaths are right around well, now. Back then, it was zero point uh, zero point zero one. Now it's about zero point zero one three. I think. Okay, can't remember. That's pretty specific. Uh, but. It didn't matter. I mean, Texas, who was more lax about it, California, who were very draconian about it, the death rates and and uh, and positive test rates were the same percentage. Well, I mean, a percentage people, of population. People do things besides go out to restaurants and businesses, and they still get sick. So, I mean, it's not. You can't stop people from being people. You can close businesses and shut down services and all that kind of stuff, but you can't change people from being people. Yeah, but but the 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 people in California became so vocal about right. it. Right, I think that's 
I think that's what he thinks. Yeah. Is that uh, on top of being angered about the really heavy shutdown, he thought it, it seemed that it was sort of elitist, above the fold, and, you know, better than everybody else. And uh, that was sort of a take on his governing as well. And whether or not that was true or not, he wasn't sure. But that was what he thought turned the, this against the, him. Those were his thoughts. And and my thoughts are along with that. But, but see, I, I think more... Uh, I think more precipitated in that because it was uh, the, there were stories about just about every high-ranking elected official in California being caught doing this. Um, every state, and, just about every state. <clears throat> well, I mean, there not was, all of them were caught, but there, I there, guarantee they're all doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but there were news stories, rather in, online, in right. print, or on video, that showed these things and i think californians just became so upset because the mass majority of people couldn't go anywhere yeah but they're enjoying everything well they're enjoying low traffic and easy uh easy bookings mm -hmm. for reservations because mm -hmm. nobody else is making reservations mm -hmm. it's like they reserve the whole restaurant exactly <laughs> yeah all right well uh we're getting pretty close there man yep yep so this was this was a really great cigar. Um, it was a medium, but it had some bold tendencies and some mild tendencies. Um, I really like that I got those medium ground spices that you don't always get in cigars. It wasn't just leathery or earthy. I really like that. Well, I think folks should uh, should check for a little Easter egg after the final music plays. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm gonna hit the music. I I think I, I think pretty much the same thing. I don't think the old fashioned detract from it as much. The larceny I I think is really great for its price point. I think that I think it's priced properly. I, agree. I love the cigar. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, Twenty three dollars. That's a buy. I feel better. Heck yeah. <laughs> so it's burning into the metal. What is it doing? It's a, it, it is burning it. It's not going around it. It is burning it. So you didn't lick it this time. I didn't lick it the last time. <laughs> Why would I lick gold? Well, okay. What? Hmm. Did you just say that out loud? <laughs> now that I say that... <laughs> I licked the car once out of envy. You Well, you licked it so you could say that I licked it. It's mine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and I thought it was funny. Because and that's I, what you do with food. That's what you do with, with everything. Siblings. That's, you, that's how you claim everything is you lick it. You lick it, it's mine. Now it's mine. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah, it's burning. It, burning it's, right through. Yeah, Burning right is. through. It is. I'm I'm very pleasantly Yours surprised. was an outlier that day. That one day, Everybody yeah. Everybody was right. Yeah, don't know, but it's burning. It's It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's not burning. It obviously it's gold. It's crinkling up. Yes, and al and allowing the well, and it, to flake it, off it, at the ash. And it, yeah, it's it's splitting. <clears throat> it's splitting at the ash marks. And yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool. All right, there we go. Now we know. <laughs> All right, listeners, we love you. Bye.